In, in that uh, one where the press council filed the amicus curiae brief, we decided we wouldn't be employing uh, counsel because it wasn't necessary just to present a brief. I did it myself. Mm -hmm. I wasn't then, I'd, I had no longer had a practicing certificate because I wasn't practicing, I was purely an academic at the time, but they allowed me and it was an interesting experience, but at least they took it and listened to it. George Williams, we'd ha there was no arrangement between us, but George Williams did a similar thing, though he had a silk with him. Uh, for the Media and Arts Alliance, which of course had much more money, I'm sure, than the Press Council. Yeah. Well, that, you that... Know, it's, it's, it's good that these things happen. It's, it's good that uh, our civil society uh, puts its hand up in, and argues these cases before the courts, just to enliven the fact that uh, we live in a free society and people should stand up. Institu institutions, civil institutions, should stand up and argue their cases before those who govern us. I, th I think you're absolutely right. We mustn't be silent when these things happen, which brings us to the voice, because uh, mm. th there is a question there. What, what the, there's a, the voice is highly critical of all the years before now, as though, it was a, as though this country were something like the Soviet Union before then, and they're forgetting things like uh, that case, which was brought so soon in uh, where civil society was brought to New South Wales with the settlement. And you've been in the media very much uh, recently, and that's been because the Prime Minister has uh, been arguing that uh, what you should do if you have fears about the voice being uh, really intruding into all forms of government, all you've got to do is read the second reading speech of the Attorney General, where all the limitations you want can be found in what the Attorney General said. I think you have reservations on that point, do you not? Uh, res reservations is a very charitable way of describing <laughs> I think it's, it's uh, laughable. There's no other way of describing it. Um, if you go and have, well, point number one, there are no uh, limitations in the Attorney General's speech. Um, he, he gave a couple of examples of uh, matters that um, could be included in the jurisdiction of the voice, but he, it was portrayed in Parliament as some form of limitation that uh, 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 the voice would be limited to, its jurisdiction would be limited to these uh, examples. It's not. If you go and have a look, it's it's just two examples of a broad jurisdiction, but that's that's not the killer point. The killer point is this: uh, judges um, under the uh, the Acts Interpretation Act are entitled to have a look at um, extrinsic material such as second reading speeches, uh, but not to uh, take account of the intention of a particular politician, the subjective intention of a particular politician, they, they look at speeches um, such as this, if the meaning of a, of, a, of a statute is obscure or hard to understand, they need to go and have a look at the circumstances that gave rise to a statute. But there's a, there's a, that applies to statutes. There's another point that makes it even more laughable, and this is that the High Court itself uh, in uh, made it very clear when it was referring to, uh, in the Cole and Whitfield case, it was referring to Section 92, uh, trade, commerce and intercourse shall be absolutely free. This is where they made some big changes to that. They made it clear that, uh, yes, from now on, this is a unanimous decision. We will be able to have a look at the, uh, the Federation debates, but not to determine the subjective intention of the founders. This is the people who drafted the Constitution. They're not interested in the, uh, the subject, what, what is viewed as the subjective intention. What they're interested in is the objective meaning of the words of the Constitution itself. So they'll look at the Federation debates to, to determine what a, a particular word meant at the time. Words change their meaning over, over time or to determine the circumstances that gave rise to the debate over Section 92. But the, the intention, if it was illegitimate for the High Court 
to look at the intention of the founding fathers, they will definitely not look at the intention of uh, Mark Dreyfus uh, in his second reading speech uh, when he introduced the legislation for the voice. That, that's not how it works. So it's flawed. That whole argument is flawed on multiple grounds. 